يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way he deserves to be praised and we ask Allah to exalt the mansion and grant peace and send his salutations and his blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and upon his companions and wives and all those who follow them on their path of righteousness until the day of recompense. All you who have believed, be mindful of Allah, fear him and say that which is right. Allah will rectify your affairs and forgive you your sins. And whosoever obeys Allah and His Messenger has attained the greatest form of success. As to what follows. Brothers in faith, I always like to link the subject of the khutbah with contemporary issues, real life situations. Hypothetical discussions are often fruitless. <laughs> and while they may entertain, they do not produce the benefit that we seek. However, trying to link the discussion with our daily lives, wherein we could deduce something useful, something applicable, something beneficial, then that is surely from the wisdom of this religion. There's an individual in my office who is keen on asking questions. Some people when they know that you are a person involved in da'wah, that kind of motivates them to inquire often and that is praiseworthy it is not blameworthy but that is not the point of contention the point of contention is that the brother often has questions based on discussions he has with other brothers within his circle of friends they sit down and talk about religious matters and then a debate happens subsequently. Then question marks are raised. Arguments arise. And there isn't a qualified person to judge in the matter. So at some point the brother refers to me assuming that I have information. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And then he tries to go back and convey the message accordingly. The problem is, in the phase wherein the people are having a religious discussion, many of us are unaware of the seriousness of discussing religious matters without knowledge. We're used to doing this in cricket. We're used to doing this in football. We're used to doing this in worldly matters where your opinion is your opinion. It's subjective. Now you can think whatever you want to think about which team is best and which team is worst. No one is going to hold you accountable for saying that the Sri Lankan cricket team is the best in the world. It's your opinion. You're entitled to it. <laughs> there isn't a haq and batil in the subject matter. It is not a revelation. But to approach religious discussions in the same manner is ludicrous. And it's a form of insanity and suicide. In case you're not aware of the severity of the subject matter, we must understand an ayah in Surah Al-A'raf. Wherein Allah mentioned the things that the people have claimed to be haram. Then Allah made a declaration, قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّيَ الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنْ Say, verily, what my Lord has made forbidden, 
is all type of illegal conduct, inappropriate conduct, usually related to matters of intimacy. That which, which is apparent and that which is hidden. As in that which is physical or that which has to do with the heart. Or it could be that which is public or that which is hidden from the people. Both meanings are applicable. Well, if and Allah made sinfulness haram. And that you oppress people wrongfully. Now watch the escalation. And that you should associate in partners with Allah that which He gave you no authority over. And then finally, and that you say about Allah that which you do not know. And the scholars say this is a method of escalation. Allah began with, uh, in terms of severity, the least, then the greater, because one is a sin that has to do with the fahisha, has to do with yourself, and so is ithim, then al baghi bihayn al haq now it affects other people, you're oppressing others, that is a greater and graver crime. Then you enter the area of shirk, which is the most dangerous of all. And then you speak about Allah without knowledge, that's where shirk comes from, that's where kufr comes from, that's where bid'ah comes from, that's where every calamity the ummah faces comes from. Speaking about Allah without knowledge. That means speaking about Allah's names and attributes, that means speaking about, speaking about Allah's legislation, the halal and the haram, technically it's about Islam. Anything that has to do with this religion, my brother in faith, may Allah bless you. You are either qualified, so go ahead, or you are not qualified, withhold. It is not an open buffet. It is not an open buffet where everybody goes and you select whatever items and you eat whatever you want and it's all you can eat. It is not. You either have a license to approach or you have a license to stay away. And there isn't anything better than staying away. Abdul Rahman ibn Abi Layla said, I met over 120 of the Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu And people will come to them in the masjid, ask him a question, and none of them would want to answer. Everyone would say, go ask him. Go ask him. Go. Nobody wanted to answer. All of them avoided giving the fatwa. All of them avoided to speak. Even though those were the most qualified people. You, you don't want to bear the responsibility of misinformation, of sharing wrong information, incorrect information. They knew the severity of the subject matter. Today, everybody has something to say. Everybody has something to say. No brother, you can do this, you cannot do this. This is halal, this is haram. What is the evidence? Wallah, I don't know. I heard, I heard a sheikh on YouTube. Naam. You heard a sheikh on YouTube? Who's the sheikh? I don't know. Where did he come from? I don't know. He just had a nice speech. But the nice speech, the, a Christian priest can have a speech 20 times better than a Muslim speaker. So what now? Jesus becomes the son of God? Because someone said it to you so uh, in such an articulated, elegant manner? Matter? Absolutely not. This is not knowledge. I heard a sheikh say this. I read it on a website. Someone sent it to me on WhatsApp. Doesn't count. It does not count. Either you know or you don't know. If you don't know, don't speak. In Surah Al-Isra, Allah gave us the, the direction and the advice. وَلَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ Subhanallah. Straight to the point. Don't go chasing and looking after that which you have no knowledge of. Don't. Inna sama wal basara wal fuada kullu ulaika kana anhu masula. Verily, the hearing, the sight, and your heart, all of those we will be questioned about. All of those. Everything we hear, everything we speak. Allah gave us the direction. Don't go after that which you have no knowledge of. 
So in a gathering where you have 10 muftis, none of them is qualified, you should be the silent one or the one who says to the people, brothers, don't discuss this. May Allah bless you, don't discuss this. Either there are students of knowledge who are analyzing the subject matter, that's fine. Tullab al they can have a discussion where they each try to exercise the knowledge Allah gave them. I'm not talking about that kind of situation. I'm talking about layman, an ordinary Muslim, who's alhamdulillah a good Muslim, fulfilling his obligations, praying five times a day, what have you. But he's not, he's not uh, skilled. He's not qualified in the area of knowledge. Then this is the brother who should just back off. Because this is how you buy your safety. And in the second part of the khutbah, we will discuss more matters related to this. أَقُولُ كَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُ الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام الأتمان الأكملان على خير خلق الله أجمعين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Brothers in faith Allah سبحانه وتعالى simplified this religion more than you think a lot of people have this false perception and misconception that Islam is a complex and difficult religion. On the contrary, Islam is one of the most simplistic religions among all these different ideologies you find in the world. We are the people of having no shortcuts. And we are the people that have foundations and branches. And that is one of the most important differentiating factors when looking into all these world religions. You will find that Islam stands out because it lays down foundations that are applicable until Yawm Al Qiyamah. Islam is simplistic in the sense that it gave us one foundation where 10,000 10, things can fall under this one fundamental principle, one principle. You can have so many things, so many answers based on one principle in Islam. You don't need to look at all of them independently. And it is not based on human intelligence purely. It is based on the understanding of the textual evidence that Allah revealed. Meaning it's not about exercising your skills or your logic. It's when you have an evidence and you have enough intelligence to understand how it applies to the people. How it can be put into practice. Based on that, when it comes to the area of who speaks and who doesn't speak, who to listen to, who not to listen to, and this controversy that we have on daily basis about new faces, and new individuals, and new speakers, and new so-called sheikhs, which is a very serious term to be throwing around and labeling everybody who's given a platform to speak as a sheikh. Because the sheikh is a title that must be earned. And believe it or not, there are very few sheikhs in the world. And there are many du'at in the world, many callers to Islam. Many speakers, sometimes a person is not even qualified as a, spe as a, a da'i. He's not even qualified as a caller to Islam. He doesn't even know Arabic properly. But he knows the fundamentals. He's more of a speaker. A person who's able to convey in a good way and an acceptable way information to an audience that are less, less educated than he is. Less aware than he is. They, are no, no, they know nothing about Islam. He knows his religion, alhamdulillah. He knows Tawheed. He's able to teach people Tawheed. He doesn't have to be the Sheikh from the Medina University. He has enough to teach others. And it is 
like that. But we must know the criteria. And we must know that this is not easy. Let alone you placing yourself in that position. Where in your, in your group, you're the sheikh. Because of some little information you received here and there, or you've come across randomly. Nothing that was studied diligently. Nothing that was studied over a course of time. Nothing that was done in the manner in which it's supposed to be done. There are prerequisites for this. There are things that you must have under your belt to be able to speak to some degree. My advice to all of us is always be on the safe side. Don't be a commentator when it is not related to you. Everything you say is an involvement on your part and as Shaykh Abdul Rahman bin Nasir said, Rahimahullah, don't think you will be let off on the last day. Don't think you can say something now and then come on the last day and say, I don't know what's going on. I, I don't have nothing to do with this. I forgot. I this. No excuses will be accepted. Any involvement of any type, any comment you leave on any YouTube video, any comment you leave on any Facebook post, any comment you leave on any social platform is your responsibility. And either you had something to do with this, so you're involved and you have the license to speak, or you are simply a nosy person that is gaining sin. My advice to you is, mind your business. Don't let your tongue betray you. The keyboard warriors, those individuals that are big shuyu behind the keyboard, behind the screen. Can't see them, can't meet them. But they got a lot to say. Keyboard warriors everywhere you go. MashaAllah, for any occasion, he can type out an essay about something that is not his business. And every letter that person will be held accountable for on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Every slander, every lie, Every oppression, every curse, every single letter will testify against that person and there will be no escape. My brothers, it's a wild, wild world outside. It's the era of fitna. It's the time of trials and tribulations. There is nothing better than minding one's business. Min husni islam al mari. The Prophet ﷺ said, A sign of a person's good Islam is him leaving alone that which does not concern him. It doesn't concern us. A lot of the stuff doesn't concern us. People having discussions about that country and the political situation and what this guy did to that guy and all this talking about matters of politics but it's none of our business. You're not a politician, ya akhi. You don't have the ability. You don't have the means. Allah did not put you in this position. Relax, man. Let the people who are doing this manage their own business. Buy your own peace of mind. Imagine yourself talking about an issue of medicine in the same manner. When you've never been to a university, well, this doctor, he shouldn't have done it this way. I think the surgery should have happened at 3 o'clock using such and such medicine. Excuse me? What are you talking about? Is this your field? No. No one wants to hear it. And if someone did this, people will be outraged. Brother, why are you speaking about me? Are you a doctor? No. Are you a nurse? No. Have you graduated from high school? Not really. SubhanAllah brother, what are you, what's, wrong, what's wrong with you? But someone speaks about the deen, we're all ears. Naam, fadal. Yeah, go ahead. MashaAllah. Yeah, he's right. How do you know he's right? I, I have a feeling, brother. You have a feeling? Do you know the evidence he used? No. Is there another evidence? 
I don't know. You're already in the wrong area. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in the hadith by Imam Ahmad, and it is sahih. He said, Allah did not reveal the Quran to contradict itself. There are parts of the Quran which explain others. So if you don't know, ask someone who knows. This is about the Quran. You may read something that to you might not make sense or it or conflicts with another ayah. Don't think Allah revealed the Quran to contradict itself. There is an explanation that the qualified people can give you. So don't go talking about it. Go ask someone who knows. And you will find them. And they will explain. And then the light bulb will, will come on. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Now that makes sense. These are the, this is the process. The process. So I beg you, my brothers, when you have a religious discussion, either you are reminding each other of the apparent aspects of the deed, and so it is vivid and clear, or be careful of entering a debate wherein in the process you speak about Allah without knowledge multiple times. Multiple times. And Allah warned us, don't go with your tongue saying هذا حرام وهذا halal, saying this is haram and this is halal. <laughs> to say about Allah that which you don't know. You wind up saying about Allah that which you don't know. This is haram, this is halal. Don't, don't go there. Leave it for the people that are dedicated for that. You buy your safety and your peace of mind. Allahumma ya muqallib al qulub واجعلنا من عبادك الصالحين وأوليائك المتقين اللهم اغفر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وصل اللهم وصل وسلم على النبي المختار